But recently I found a problem with watt cycle batteries. It was with their smart batteries. And as you guys know, I hate Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and smart on any type of solar device. If I have to update an app, log into an app, or have this data collection from an app for a battery, that pisses me off. And the older watt cycle batteries were my favorite because they had none of that. It was just a battery. Nothing I have to update, nothing I have to check on. You just hook it up, there's two terminals and it works. But they never made a 314 amp hour model. So today we're gonna test out their new dumb version 314 amp hour. Now watt cycle used to be the cheapest but now this one is $429. This battery has the same capacity and it's $120 cheaper and it works great. And it works so well that I put it back together with duct tape for my teardown video. Some people did report that they weren't getting the same cells as me though. So the consistency is questionable, but there is more competition and it's pretty good. So actually we'll open this one up in the video and this one and compare the two. Also, we have the 20 amp hour and some people on the forum complain that this one is not as good build quality as these others. So we're gonna rip this apart part and find out. One forum member said that he wasn't pulling full capacity, but he couldn't prove it. So if you post something on the forum, please post your test results. You have to substantiate your claims with evidence because this one actually did pass the capacity test. And this one passed the capacity test too. And at a 0.2C rate, I got 329 amp hours, but then I did a 200 amp capacity test. And I pulled 316, which is crazy considering the capacity of these cells. Next, I gave it 300 amps and the overcurrent protection kicked in after 10 seconds. So that worked, but who knows what's inside? So let's rip this thing apart and see what's going on. This difference is pretty embarrassing. This is on a whole different level. This thing does work, but look, the balance lead is not protected. And the BMS is just strapped on here. This one is actually bolted down. And look at these bus bars supplying the BMS. Compare it to this. Yeah, I think this one actually might be worth the money. That is crazy. Also, the heat sink on the BMS is covered with foam, which could cause it to heat up more but not on the watt cycle. And these massive bus bars and these steel cell holders probably cool it down even more. Probably why I could pull 200 amps for a full capacity test. That was impressive. Now, functionally, this one works great. I've done lots of testing on it and I do like it. But man, when you step it up a hundred bucks, you get quite a bit more. Now, because this is their first large dumb version, I thought they would dumb it down with a cheaper BMS. But no, this looks fantastic. This is the same build quality as all the other ones. And look at how big these bus bars are. This thing is so overbuilt, it's crazy. And the balance leads are protected. But where is the temperature sensor? Oh, here they are. And here's one, and the other one is not coming off. Let's test this one for low temp charging protection. So now we're charging with 10 amps. Here's some ice cold water. Oh, and it works. Let's warm it up. Works perfect. And the light turned on. I wonder why, I guess it was in a sleep mode. Not a lot much to critique. I don't really see anything. Now this one's actually impressive for being a dumb battery. Usually they don't look this good. Usually everything's held together with foam tape and glue. This one, this is nice. Also look at how much copper is connecting the main terminals. This is all tin copper, I just cut it open. Where do you even buy these? I've never even seen these before. The current handling capacity of this thing is probably insane. Anyways, this is good. This is actually impressive. Rarely are we impressed on this channel. But let's see if the 20 amp hour is a different story. So first off, half the case is filled with air. Uh-oh, look at these nickel strips. This nickel strip weld job is pretty horrible. I've never seen this before. This cell has one, two, three strips welded to it. There has to be a better way. We have a temperature sensor. For this size battery, this size BMS is pretty typical. Let's see if the low temp charging protection actually works. Just because it's small doesn't mean that it shouldn't have all the safety features everyone else has. So now we're charging with 10 amps, which is a lot for this capacity. This is a 0.5 C rate. Oh, I can't even get to the ice. Oh, that was fast. Instantly worked. Oh, it's back on. I can't get it to touch the ice all the way, but it definitely works. All right, that's good. 
I don't see a company name or capacity. And this side is pretty messy as well with the nickel strips. So the build quality is not as good as other watt cycles. The sills are questionable, but functionally it did work. But there are some question marks here, especially the cells. I just wish there was some label or something on here. This one's $150. You're better off just buying a 100 amp hour for $100 these days. Oh, here we go. On their main website, it's $60. That's strange. 15,000 cycles? What is this? I challenge WattCycle to show me a data sheet stating that these cells specifically have 15,000 charge cycles, unless that's false advertising. And it has six different certifications? Really? Everything else seems accurate. But yeah, I'm not buying that. And look at the ad. My battery does not look like that on the inside. It looks like that. <laughs> so yeah, I challenge Watt Cycle. If you're seeing this, show me where this can get 15,000 charge cycles in your test data. And yeah, the build quality is not as good, but functionally it does work. Now for the price, I wouldn't buy this. I would just get a 100 amp hour with better build quality. Even with their own batteries, if you double the price, you get five times more capacity. So, and this has a really good build quality. So yeah, not a big fan of this model in particular. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. I've never considered these smaller batteries, but I will in the future now. Now this thing is cool. No stupid Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi. It is just a battery and it has high quality parts. So yeah, this thing is actually something I want to look forward to. Now we need to test it long term. I'm going to use this with my load tester when I test fuses and circuit breakers. And if you guys ever have a problem with this battery, please post it on the forum. But this might be my favorite battery from them. It's dumb, it has a lot of capacity, and it's cheap compared to the others for the build quality. So yeah, I'm actually a fan of this one. In the smart version one, they did fix it, but I wouldn't buy it. I don't like those features. And the way you can tell is if it doesn't have smart on the front of the battery. If it doesn't say smart or Bluetooth, you're good to go. That's going to be my favorite. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.